meeting in a regular scheduled city council meeting to order. Yeah. Uh, uh, clerk, please call me. Evening, everyone. Uh, Councilman Jim Dahl. Here. Stan and Art. Here. Here. Uh, Councilman Rixby. Here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stop in his face, but. Mayor Pro Tem uh, Davey. Here. Mayor Deeper. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. We need to report out on the workshop, Mr. City Attorney. Okay. No, you do not. All right, with that, we'll move into the invocation of Pledge of Allegiance. Dr. Rigsby, you're up. Unless you want to do it from back there. Bless the food you're eating, too, while you're at. Do what? The prayer and the invocation. Oh, me. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance, David. Start with Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. And let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we are your people. This is your city. We ask that you help us administer it in the best way we can. In your name. Amen. Thank you, sir. City Manager, do we have any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Okay, at this time, we'll ask uh, if there's anybody in the public that wants to speak on a non agenda item. Let's come forward. Seeing nobody there, we'll move on to our scheduled items. First thing is a public hearing, Council Bill R2023-28. Our we debate program. Matt, could you send this item, please? Thank you very much. Nice to see you all. Thank you for having me. Here to give the official report once again. An exciting year for the spring 2023 weed abatement season. Um, as always, we started in April, uh, the first week between the 3rd and the 4th, for our first initial inspections of approximately 300 parcels. Uh, we sent out a lot of notices to clean property this year. Um, as you all know, we had a lot of rain, which means a lot of weeds. 243 notices to clean property, which you can see in your packet says Exhibit A, were sent by regular mail on April 11th to the owner of record. I did receive 12 letters uh, returned to center. Each one of them were posted physically on the property for the owner of record to see. Uh, the follow-up inspections began uh, the first week of May between the 1st and the 2nd. If abatement had not been accomplished or if arrangements with myself or my office has not been um, predetermined, the time extension was given for two weeks. The parcel was placed on an abatement list and the city contractor uh, was assigned 14 parcels uh, from private residents to perform work on. On June 20th, uh, you can see on Exhibit B, invoices were sent out specifying the cost of the work performed by the contractor plus the city's administrative fee. Uh, <clears throat> they had the opportunity to make the payment um, tonight as a deadline on July 11th. The list in Exhibit C are the outstanding notices that remain unpaid. Uh, there were zero environmental impacts. And I would like to point out for the financial impact, I did have two residents reach out to me once they had received their bills, their invoices, stating that they had sold their properties and that they no longer own them. They never produced anything as proof of the sale. I did take the next step and reach out to the assessor's office, find out who the current owners were and send them a manually uh, drafted notice. Nothing will change as far as the process of attaching liens to their property taxes as we do every year. Um, we did just want to make a suggestion to waive the administrative fees. It was already, Tom and I have already spoken about it, and um, ap apply the contractor cost to the lien. For those two cases? Yes. And those were confirmed that they had been sold? They were not confirmed. They were, I, I was able to take note on the assessor's website that the, yes, the property owner information changed from one to another. Well, it appears to be true. It appears to be true. They didn't give us proof on when they sold the property. Um, they were given a notice and they never made contact with our 
office when the notice was given that they had sold the property. It's only when they received the bill, of course, they yeah. took exception. That concludes my. Which, there are those two are on exhibit C here. Yes, sir. Which ones are there? They are the parcel numbers that end in one three five and one zero five. Last name Kobanov or one, and the other one last name Patel. Let's see Patel. Oh, on, on the other side. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I don't. I don't see admin fees on one of them. Only admin fees. Yes, I removed one to show you, give an example of what okay, it so it's like. the same same price for both of them. Yes. Which is not very much. Anymore. No. Okay, to entertain a public yeah. thought or begin to, to discuss that or I not the idea about waiving the fees oh, more well. administrative. Yes. Or do we yeah? So <clears throat> how do you guys feel about that? Consensus? Okay, I think we're good with that. So, all right, are you done with your presentation? Sorry. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll now we'll open the public hearing. Anybody who wants to speak on this topic, jump up. See, nobody will go to close it. And look for any questions you can die us or, or move it. Madam Clerk, we have a first and a second. Hey, Mr. to receive a report of the Spring 2020 review debate net program. The report the accounting costs and adopt Council Bill R 2023 28, a resolution of the City Council of the City of La Valenta adopting a report and statement of expenses for the Spring 2023 Read Abatement Program and imposing a lien upon property for payment therefore. Councilman Jindal? Yes. Councilman Bernard? Yes. Councilman Rixby? Yes. Mayor Portante? Mayor Duper? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you very much. Moving on to the consent calendar. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions? Okay. We have questions. For number six, um, this is like the first time I'm seeing this. We're, we're rejecting all bids. What happens now? Yes. What, what happened? I have to revise the plan and reduce the scope of work and try to stay within the budget. So what happened is we, we budget 110000 to connect the, the generator the power to power this building, the lowest bid came in at four hundred forty thousand dollars, four times as much. So today I had a meeting with an electrical contractor and tried to figure out what I could do to do the scope of work and stay within the budget. So I will revise the plan and go out to bid again. I ain't not breaking the number. Okay, that was part? one A, one B. So now it's facility. I mean, it's, it's developing that. For 10, um, the summary says like we need like the overcosts happen, but why did this overcost happen for 10? What do you mean old cost? There's not old cost. Did I read it wrong? The contingency for 2400? Yeah. But a lot of time is we that's it, that's how much we pay her. Are we paying 24,000 or are we paying? Twenty-four thousand four hundred. Okay, and we're requesting an additional twenty-four hundred just in case there's something happen. Got it. So nothing's happened yet, but just no. it's just contingency. Like a ten percent over mm -hmm. yeah. right. And then the last one was. Uh, I said two questions. That was one B. <laughs> or fourteen. Uh, what's going on with this? Oh, they yeah, accepted uh, the project. Maybe. Okay. And now we're going to have a, a one year maintenance. We have to keep it up for one year. And then after that, we take it over. Except for my end. Thank you. I'm going to get a first and a second. Dr. Reese, we have Dr. Lenard. Motion is to approve the consent calendar as submitted. Councilman Jindal? Yes. Councilman Lenard? Yeah. 
Councilman Rigsby. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Davy. Aye. Mayor Duper. Yes. Thank you very much. Nothing on old business, moving on to new business. Um, we now have a vacant seat. Um, I'm guessing Leslie George. Yes. Just before George. Before. before. What's her name again? That, no, oh. it's a Mr. Wesley. Yeah, James. <laughs> yes, so you're right. So now it's two. two uh, Georgia Hart. Yes. That's cute. And one more person that we need. One more. But we have one person applied for to be on the historical committee. Miss Sally Lingley Aloha. She has lived in our city for... Yeah, I was born at the local <laughs> sanitarium in 1953, so been around here a very long time. Yes, and she's very active in yeah. the uh, in the Renmar area. Yes, I lived in Renmar for 20 years. Moved, moved from there, was born there, came back. My father still lives there, so. And everybody had no friend. <laughs> down the street on Juanita uh, Street. So both of them were active. And and I'm really glad to see them apply for the uh, to be on the historical uh, committees. So welcome, welcome. And again, if you accept, and, and that's why they're here. Is your patient ID at Loma Linda like four digits? I give you an ID number based on your first encounter. My wife was born there too, so I was teasing her. She only has like four digits, and they start with zero. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I have to look at my birth certificate. <laughs> No, I mean the Loma University patient ID. Oh no, that was not such an encounter with the it was the Hill Church, you know where the Hill yeah, Church uh -huh, that's yeah. where I was born. Yeah, yeah. Up there. <laughs> How about you, Fred? Are you born here? Right on uh right on Bonita the... Street in Rinmar. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Right there on the corner. <laughs> that is a, at home. <laughs> Those were the days you were born at home. Yeah. Wow. Welcome, welcome aboard. Well, thank you. Well, pretty excited, so thank you very much. Quick comment, comment. I really appreciate the summary you provided. So it's a really nice touch. Well, thank you. I wanted to introduce myself. I know Jarb, I know Jarb, but no one, I didn't know anyone else. And I thought, well, something uh, new. And I appreciated the signs. Well, tell them what the sign. I didn't tell them. Uh, we put up the uh, oh, the historical Bryn Mawr sign. Mar. So the thing is with Bryn Mawr is my zip code is nine two three one eight, and that has caused so many problems. They either think we live in Loma Linda, we live in Redlands, anywhere but Bryn Mawr. So I always have to say, well, where is Bryn Mawr? So now there's signs. So. It was very welcome. Thank you. And that project was spearheaded by the Historical Commission. Oh, there you go. Nice. Self-fulfilling there. <laughs> That's where I saw it. I went to read on it. And then I saw the vacancy. So I told my dad, okay, well, let's see, something new to do. There's plenty to do that the old and the new have to merge together to preserve what we have. I can think of a couple of things that will be coming up that you'll get to part of. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. You need a motion? I we need a motion. We have a general consensus, but uh, have a motion then? I'll move to appoint Sally. First and a second, third, or and a fourth. And a fifth. It's Lay Aloha. Lay Aloha. Lay Aloha. No, was Lynn your husband? Yes. Yes, he, was. he was my husband. And he used to be on the uh, fixture planning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fixtures. He taught my wife how to write checks at the academy. Uh, <laughs> yes, he was. Is that a complaint? The that academy. He how to write checks? Well, her handwriting was not. Okay, okay. so is it good or do you want to That's call her? Okay, uh, moving on, reports of council members. Oh, a couple of things. Those are both traffic related. I know I understand this one is Caltrans, but I found myself down at oh, under the freeway at Mountain View, getting ready to go on the freeway. No cars for about two minutes, two and a half minutes. No light change. I know it's Caltrans, but it's maybe somebody looked into it. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it was just because it was a holiday and it was still on the whole 
I don't know. So are yeah. those timed or are they pressure sensitive? Pressure sensitive, but I will yeah, just tell them how to know. But I don't know. I haven't been down there since, so maybe it's directly better. I'm glad you reminded me because I, I emailed him the application to pave much of you <laughs> as I need the freeway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll take it out to bid, but they have not responded back to me yet. So I will. Uh, we'll just. The other thing I was going to ask about, is there any way anybody could look at the feasibility where Bryn Mawr comes down and joins Newport? There's a little T there. Bryn Mawr. Is it right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a little T there. Yes. Right where the overpass is. Yes. 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 I have yet, I've lived in this city for, I don't know, 25 years. I have yet to see anybody stop at that stop sign coming up Newport and going, turning to go up Bryn Mawr. I'm the only one in the whole city that saw us make a full stop, just so you understand. But everybody else, they just whip right through that stop sign. Is there a way we could study whether that could be a yield sign instead of a stop sign for people coming this way and turning no, up? No but, but, but at the same time, they can go straight across now. Yeah, but I mean- The Newport is, is east-west. Yes. The Bryn Mawr is north-south, and the Bryn Mawr, the one that's turned. Yeah, I understand, but what I'm saying, when people come this way, and they have about 99% of them go to the right, and they just go whoop, right around. But, but at the be same a time, yield for a right turn? I don't know. It's just an idea. I'm just bringing it up. We have stop signs that people stop before they go straight. I understand. The, the people that on Bryn Mawr don't have stop sign. I know. Yeah. I was just wondering if there's a feasibility that the people turning right and going up Bryn Mawr could be a I yield think, sign. I think it's legal, but you have to have a separate yield lane. Yeah. And a separate yeah. Yeah. lane. To yeah. Yeah. Lane. yeah. I don't know. Just an idea. Like if people fly through it all the time. I say use it too. <laughs> Except me. <laughs> hey. City attorney recommend traffic so for there. No. Driver school for me. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be a good place for a roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> we could try our first roundabout. He, he wanted so bad to put a roundabout down down there in Anderson, and that didn't work out. So. <laughs> okay, uh, any reports of officers? Okay, moving on to the su successor agency. Any items to be added or deleted? Yes, sir. Um, anybody from the public wishing to speak on a non-agendized successor agency issue? Seeing nobody come forward. We have the consent calendar. First and a second. Madam Clerk. I'm going to approve the consent calendar on the successor agency. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, the chair and member of the report, seeing none, we'll move into the housing authority. The items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on an unagendized housing authority item? Please run forward, seeing nobody jumping up. We'll move on to the consent calendar. First, and a second. Is to approve the consent calendar on the housing authority? Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Any chair member off the report? Seeing that, we'll adjourn that. All right, then. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 Thank you.